Hello everyone, my name is Juan Carlos. Everybody calls me JC because Juan Carlos is a, a mouthful. Um, and I'm representing the Department of Earth, uh, the, um, Applied Health Sciences today. Um, um, I don't have a lot of time, of course, that I, I'm just gonna mention that a lot of members in the department have a long tradition of developing software, open source software for many different applications. So I'm gonna give you uh, a, a brief summary of the products that we have available at the moment. Let me start with Lysim. Lysim is a fantastic platform. It's been under development for 30 years now. So we're talking about sustainability. Well, it's, that, that's actually not bad at all. Uh, a very complete package already. Um, if you go to the website, it's full of um, videos, tutorials, documentation, it allows you to do fantastic things in terms of manipulating geospatial data, but it's also a fully multi-hazards modeling platform as well. So this afternoon, one of our colleagues, Bastion, will give you a talk about this. I uh, just extracted one snapshot from his presentation just to give you a, um, a flavor of the different types of hazards that you can model with this platform. It's a very complete, very popular, and it's been the core of many projects in our department as well. I also wanted to show you uh, very quickly uh, a set of tools, in this case a little bit more different. Lysim is a physics-based modeling platform. This one is a collection of libraries to analyze hyperspectral images. Um, and of course, when I say analyze, I mean in the broadest sense. Uh, it's been developed again for many, well, decades now. Um, and I, of course I'm missing a lot of people then unfortunately, so apologies in advance, but I'm also very new in the department. Um, I thought that the name was HiPi, but my colleagues tells me that it's Hippie, so I also suggest that maybe they can use that for uh, marketing purposes. I don't know if it's going to work. But uh, this software uh, is also very popular, particularly for um, uh, well, research, training, education. Uh, it's very simple, you know, it, it's mostly used under Windows platforms. Um, and just, you know, with your mouse, you can take full hyperspectral images, uh, do a lot of different types of analysis with it, and end up with final products like an entire classification of the mineralogy on the surface or on the outcrops. Uh, also, uh, again, very well known, uh, very, very complete. Uh, we can always do better, of course. Uh, the, well, the last thing about the department is, is also involved in the creation of digital platforms for risk management. And usually these platforms are the result of products. Uh, they, they come at the end of a, of a, of a project. And then they're extremely useful, um, fully accessible by everyone. If you go to the little um, links, uh, you open a link and you can assess real time uh, risks, different types of hazards in a very interactive way, full um, a data set supporting of course, the information that you are seeing. So it's an extremely powerful resource for many different stakeholders, but particularly governments, to um, manage risk and, and hazards. Uh, I've been also asked to, because I, unfortunately, and I, I, it, this is terrible because I really wanted to participate with the whole thing, but I'm on my way to the UK, and I'm not going to be here in the afternoon. So, so um, um, I've been asked to present also the third piece of software uh, that we call the Linmod um, Suite. Suite because these days Linmod has very different versions and flavors uh, um, supported by different groups. Uh, I started that probably now 12 years ago or something like that, so I'm just gonna tell you about the, the granddaddy of all the versions. Um, it's an integrative platform for Earth, um, for the characterization of the thermochemical structure of the planet. All the way from the surface to lower mantle, or let's say thousands of kilometers. Um, it, it takes a, a whole bunch of disciplines and crunches them all together in supercomputers to create digital Earth uh, twins. And once we have that, we can uh, eas well, easily combine a whole bunch of data sets, including land-based data sets like uh, seismic information, uh, magnetotellurics, and satellite information. And that allowed us to create new disciplines like 
multi-observable thermochemical tomography that creates models of the subsurface where you can fully characterize the thermochemical structure. You, you can see the chemistry of the subsurface, the temperature of the subsurface, the state of stress, so on and so forth. In the past five years, this, as many other things, as you know very well, this cr is created as part of a research project, but then eventually somebody in the industry says, hey, wait a minute, I want to know more about this. So for the past five years, uh, LITMO has been uh, supported by a whole bunch of um, government institutions and industry partners. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the solid boxes are the projects that have been completed already or that are almost almost done, and the dash ones are the ones under development at the moment. So it's more or less pretty global. Um, a very quick example uh, of mining in the mining part for critical minerals and so on and so forth in Africa. This is the only technique that can give you uh, information on... There is, a, there is a word that we use, but it's not going to mean much. Some, um, it's called metasomatism. It's effectively the compo compositional signatures in the deep mantle of the Earth that actually correlates extremely well with the surface expression of mineral deposits. And this is the only method that I can actually can provide that. Um, so it worked really well here, but soon people realized that, hey, what I mean, if you have full um, characterization of the temperature structure, we can use it for geothermal energy as well. So we became really interested in providing the tools particularly for deep geothermal, supercritical reservoirs, which are the ones that really have, is the, best, is the best bed that we have to create base load electricity power. Um, so we started migrating towards enriching the scales, towards greenfields exploration, large scale characterization, to middle scale characterization of the magmatic deposits, the deposits and, and reservoirs deep in the crust all the way to the thermomechanical simulation of the actual reservoirs on the surface. So you can start predicting where the fluids and the magma starts um, um, uh, focusing in, in, in specific structures and that helps you to characterize the, the exploration program in your reservoir. We never attempted to compete with commercial software this is software created for running in supercomputers um, in the academic uh, environment. So the interaction is very uh, basic. Um, just inputs, input files come in, information comes out about the resources that you're using and so on and so forth. But then we soon realized when, uh, from our uh, friends in industry that the actual tools that we develop for the post-processing of the, of the results uh, are entirely competitive in terms of what a commercial uh, product or software company will, will produce or will give you. So it has um, a whole of facilities and, 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 and resources for data mining and processing, post-processing that is actually entirely compatible and competitive. Um, so I will leave it here. I think we only have 10 minutes and um, just two last things the first one is i'm really sorry i'm going to miss the discussion i'm going to try to input as much uh, feedback as i can um uh, because th this is amazing it's, and, and i really wanted to take part i'm sorry i have to go but um the other thing i'll say just please save a little bit of time to just address the uh, the uh, problem with gender balance in the audience and in, in our community in general so just save a little bit of time on this to address that point Thank you. Thank you very much, Juan Carlos, uh, presentation. Uh, uh, do we have any questions from the audience? We have the microphone now, so the online people can also hear you. OK, I, I, I have a small question, actually. Yeah. Um, so can you very briefly talk about your experience with the user community? Because you showed that your, your, your software is in fact used uh, worldwide. So my understanding in big, uh, big, big projects also by the uh, uh, governmental organizations. So how is your interaction with the user community? Is it really bringing a lot of uh, additional uh, workload and effort from your side? Um, yes, it hasn't been easy and it's not easy uh, still because we, we, we have two problems here. The, the first one is the educational aspect. Um, 
universities are not giving us the education, the holistic education that uh, a student will need in order to address uh, software or platforms, integrity platforms of this type. So it usually takes us two years just to train um, a student to, to understand the connections between all the components. Um, obviously that translates to the industry partners as well. There is, no, there is no enough training out there for them to make use of this type of platform. So that is very, therefore, it involves us very heavily all the time and it's very time consuming. Um, point one. Point two, um, we are not, we have worked with software engineers, but I'm not a software engineer and I don't pretend to be and I don't want to be. So um, there is, we, we face this problem at some time where we, you have to trust each other Software engineer, yes, I would like to make it super efficient and I would like to use Python here and I would like to use, and then I said, no, wait a minute, you know. I also need to understand what you're doing because I'm the one developing the science and, 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 the, and the actual concepts, right? And then vice versa, you know, it's like they say, but you are doing a terrible job here. So fair enough, I get it. Help me and let's meet somewhere in between because if I lose total control of the product to the point that I can't program anymore, you know, and then it's, uh, it's useless for us. And, and the community in general, the scientific community, struggles with that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you can address that in the discussion as well in a bit, a little bit. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, this team aspect is really uh, quite important. Thank you. Thank you.